Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday School Hour of the Mount Zion Christian Baptist Church, where our pastor is Elder Dr. Mal Melbourne. We are so thankful that you chose to study with us this morning, and we would like to begin by reciting our church school creed. By the help of the Almighty God, we as Primitive Baptist Church School members will strive with all our might and energy to attend church school and church services regularly, to study the Bible faithfully, and to practice Christian principles among all mankind. Our lesson this morning is the wisdom of Jesus, coming from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and we will be led by Elder Martrice Bethea. Be blessed. Good morning, Mount Zion. Amen, amen. Certainly a pleasure to be here. It's a blessing. Uh, again, I, I say, as I always say, I wish that you all were here so I could, I could see your faces. Uh, uh, but God is still good. He gives us this opportunity. So I'm just thankful that we can still go over his word and study his word. Let us pray. Uh, Father God, we come before you this morning thanking you for being such a good God. We thank you, Father, for yet another opportunity to study your word. We pray, Father, that you will open our hearts, open our minds, allow your word to sink deep within. Help us, Father, to be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We thank you, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Another good lesson. Another good lesson. Um, one great thing about this lesson, I, I noticed as I was looking over it, there's six verses, and, and I think about um, some of the other lessons that I've had the, the opportunity, the privilege to teach, and they were a little bit longer, and you know I'm long-winded, so I was going on and on, but amen. The Lord said, you have six verses. You got six verses, so, so even you ought to be able to keep it a little short. So I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So we got six verses in our lesson this morning. The title is... The wisdom of Jesus. We've been talking about wisdom throughout this entire section, throughout this entire book. So now we're going to be in the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Look at our aim for change. Aim for change says by the end of this lesson, we will identify the reason or reasons the people in Nazareth could not accept the wisdom of Jesus. Then we want to repent of our I'm sorry, repent of the occasions when Jesus' word made us feel offended instead of us accepting them as wisdom. Amen. I, I think that's the, the probably the, the overall theme of this, this, this particular lesson. Jesus' words should be accepted by us. We should, we, should, we should take them in. We should want to hear them. Sometimes the word is is is, is for encouragement, is to lift us up, is to give us a uh, 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 strength to move forward. The uh, Bible says, I look to the hills from what comes my help. But sometimes, church, sometimes, sometimes, the word is meant to make us feel uncomfortable. The word is meant to convict us. The word is meant to, to show us that, 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 that uh, we need, to, we need to, to ask God to help us to straighten up. Um, they used to say, uh, if, if, if the preacher ain't stepping on nobody's toes, they ain't doing a job. So, so sometimes the word is supposed to, supposed to, 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 to step on our toes. So, so what we want to do, that second aim for change, repent of those times, those occasions when, when God's word offended us instead of us accepting his words as words of wisdom. And then finally, we want to commit to it accepting the words of Jesus even when they challenge us. Amen. That's it. That's it. Accepting God's words even when it, it's, it's, it's telling us that we're wrong. Sometimes we get the feeling like we're, we, we're in the right. But when the word tells us that we're wrong, we have to be able to accept it. Amen. Amen. Our in focus story, I really don't want to touch on that too much, but it talks about um, uh, someone who had come back to his neighborhood and, and he was trying to talk to uh, one of the neighbors, one of the residents, trying to get her help. And it just seemed as though she was looking down on him because of his upbringing. She knew him from growing up. And, and they weren't the, they hadn't 
been in that neighborhood the whole time. So they had been kind of new to the neighborhood. His, his background wasn't maybe as prominent as some others. So now even though he had gone away and he had been to college and he had learned these things and he had bettered himself, he came back trying to do some volunteer things or, or some charitable things, but it just seems like some of the neighbors that he talked to just still look back on how he used to be. Sometimes people don't want to let us forget how we used to be. The uh, Bible says that we're new creatures, but sometimes folks just, just, just want to uh, think of us or remind us or look at us the way we used to be rather than the, the new creature that God has made us to be. So our lesson talks about that. Keep in mind, verse, Mark 6, 2, and 3. And when the Sabbath was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? And they were offended at him. Amen. Amen. That's all I keep in mind, verse. So again, like I said, we only have uh, six verses. So we got two outlines. So my my, my, my desire, my, my prayer is not to... Not to drag it out, but just to just to give us a good sense of, of what this lesson is talking about. Our first outline is called a, a people offended. A people offended. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Then the second outline, a prophet dishonored. Verse 4, 5, and 6. Amen. Amen. So verse 1, 2, and 3, our first outline. A people offended. Reading from the New King James Verse 1 says, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. Verse 2 says, And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Verse 3 is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Amen. Amen. That's the first Amen. outline. So as we look at this first outline, we look at where chapter 6 picks up. I, I want to go back uh, just a minute to, to chapter 4. Not chapter 4 of Mark, actually chapter 4 of Luke, but uh, right before, or not right before, I'm a little earlier, maybe, I don't know, six months to a year before this happened. In Luke chapter 4, we see that Jesus had been teaching and preaching, and he told, um, he told the Jews that their faith was lacking. He, he was telling them about the faith that he had seen uh, other places. Uh, other people's faith that was greater than theirs. They became so angry at what Jesus was saying that they tried to kill him. The Bible said they led him to a mountain and they intended to push him over the cliff. So these people, these same people that, that Jesus had grown up with, these same uh, neighbors, they wanted to kill him. But yet and still, look at how gracious he is. Now in chapter 6 here in Mark, Jesus has come back and he's still trying to teach to them and preach to them and, and heal and minister and be, um, be gracious and be good and be helpful. He still come back. So that shows us, even though we turn our backs on the Lord sometimes, even though we don't obey him sometimes, even though we get angry at him because of our circumstance or our situation, he always, always comes back to us. He always has his arms stretched out, always wants to, to lift us up, always wants to welcome us in. So here in chapter 6, Jesus has come back to, to Nazareth, come back to his people, his hometown where he grew up. Bible says uh, he, he came to his own country. His disciples had, had come with him. So even though these people had shown that they, they, they really didn't want to receive the word, Jesus still came back. So, so church, we have to ask God to 
fix us, change yeah. us, yeah. And, and smooth those rough edges. Those times when we don't want to hear the word, or we don't want to listen to that person that the Lord has placed in our path to, to give us some godly advice. Those times when we are, are just mad, we're angry, we want to be mad. Those times when we just don't want to uh, hear what thus says the Lord, we want to ask God to fix us Amen. so that when he is speaking to us through his word or through someone else, that we are ready to receive. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, feed me. Feed me. Uh, change me. Mold me. Make me into who you want me to be. So Jesus came to his people, and we see here in verse 1, he and his disciples are now in Nazareth. Verse 2 tells us there was a Sabbath. So as the custom was for Jesus, when the Sabbath would, would come, he would be in the synagogue. He would be teaching and preaching. So when the Sabbath came, the Bible says, he began to teach in the synagogue. Um, Sunday morning. Sunday morning is a time that, that we as Christians come to church. Or, or if we're not able to come to church, amen, we, we want to... It's the time that we've set aside for, for worship, for reflection, for, for prayer. And these are things that we should be doing all through the week. But Sunday, Sunday should be special to us. Sunday should be that time when we recognize that, that, that this is the day that Christians all over the world come together. Corporate worship. We, we come together and we tell one another about what we've been through, where God has brought us from. We encourage one another. We listen to one another, those who are going through things right now, and the Lord allows us to, to be a shoulder for them to lean on. So Sunday morning, I always think, should be a time that we look forward to, look forward to getting up Sunday morning and going to the, to the, to the house of worship. So, so here it is on uh, uh, the Sabbath. Jesus is teaching, he's preaching. It says, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did he get these things in? And what is this wisdom that was given to him? These are the people that Jesus had, had grown up with. I, I was thinking that some of these folks had, had probably uh, helped raise Jesus. Uh, amen. They, 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 they likely, if, if, if they, there was such a thing at the time, they, they likely uh, babysat for Jesus. They, hey, watch Jesus while I go over here and, and do whatever. So, so they saw him grow up. They watched him grow up. So in their mind, they know him. They know everything about him. They know what he can do and what he can't do. And in their minds, Jesus really is, is nobody special. I know that boy from, from back when he couldn't even wipe his own nose. So, so they were astonished. The Bible says they were astonished at the things that he was saying. And I believe that as he was teaching they, they were amazed. They, they, they were wondering, well, how does he know all this? He, 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 he grew up around here. He, he never went to formal uh, 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 training or formal schooling. He, he doesn't have, where, where is he getting all this stuff? And I think at first, perhaps, they were a little bit impressed. Wow, but I, hometown boy knows this? But, but, but look, at, look at where the scripture takes us. Uh, at first, they, they, they were astonished. The Bible said they were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? What wisdom is this that, that was given to him? What, where is Jesus getting all this stuff? What's going on? But look at verse 3. Verse 3, it seems that their, their thought began to change. From, from, from being impressed or being amazed and astonished, now they're perhaps jealous, perhaps... Um, I, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but they went from being uh, excited about hearing what he had to say to now wanting to put him down. Amen. Is this not the, the, the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Who do he think he is? Wait a minute. He's he trying to teach us. I, I, I know that boy from, from a long time. Who, who, who in the world does he think he is? Look, look, at, look at verse 3. Is this not the carpenter? So, so not not saying, yes, yes, he he's, he's he has this knowledge. Yes, yes, I'm I'm proud to have 
have known him from a youth, but now they want to put him down. They want to put him down. I know his mama. I know his mama. Mary, he, he's the son of Mary, the brother of James and, and Joseph and Judas. They start naming off his family. His sisters are here with us now. They, they ain't nobody. They, 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 they in the same boat we in. They are not rich and famous and, and well educated and, or anything like this. Who are they? He's not anything special. His family's not anything special. special. Who does he think he is? So here, this first outline, amen, I told you it was kind of short. <laughs> amen, this first outline, verse 1, 2, and 3. So, so in verse 3, they're looking at Jesus saying, who, 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 who does he think he is? The title of this outline uh, says, a people offended. These people now feel like they are uh, offended because Jesus is teaching them. He's telling them so, and he's telling them things that they really don't know. He's 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 expounding on the word. It's like us. None of us knows everything about the word. So when we study the word, when we come to Sunday school, when we come to Bible study, when we're able to 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 learn, we should have our our ears wide open. Our, our hearts and minds should be open to receiving more and more because none of us knows it all. So as they're sitting there in the synagogue and Jesus is, is explaining the word, he's teaching it, he's, he's astounding them with his knowledge and his wisdom rather than being accepting of the word, the Bible said they were offended at it. They were offended because, because he knew more than they knew. Of course, because he is the son of God, but they didn't want to accept him as being the Messiah. In their mind, that's the same little boy that used to run around here, and I used to have to help Mary uh, babysit him. I used to have to have to have to help take care of him. John 1 and 11 says, he came to his own, and his own received him not. That's what we're seeing right here. Jesus came to his own people. Those people who knew him and should, if, if nobody else, they should have been accepting of him. They should have been, been welcoming of him. But they were offended by what he was saying. Amen. Amen. That's our first outline. First outline. Amen. Amen. Moving on. Moving on. The second outline, verse 4, 5 and 6. Verse 4 says, But Jesus said to them, A prophet is without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. That's, that's, that's something right there. A prophet is not without honor. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Not without honor. So in other words, Jesus is saying, when a man of God goes out and about, and he goes around to people who don't know him, he, he, he had been teaching to, to, to he had been in Capernaum and Jerusalem, and, and even uh, Gentiles, wanted to hear what he had to say, but here in his own land, his own hometown, his own people, they wanted to put him down. So so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Now Jesus was without sin, of course. He was without sin. But look at us, look at us. We 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 have done some things in our past that, that we probably are not proud of. And we can go somewhere where people don't know us and perhaps teach Sunday school or 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 teach biology or whatever our field may be, and people want to hear what we have to say. They, they recognize that we know what we're talking about. They're accepting us. But sometimes we can come back home to those people who perhaps knew us before we became who we are now, before God changed us, and all they see is what we used to be. Amen. All they see is what we did wrong. When we used to run around with them doing this and that, when we uh, made mistakes in the past. And some folks don't want to let us forget those mistakes. So when they see us, no matter how much God has changed us, no matter how far we are removed from where we used to be, all they see and all they really want to see is where we used to be. They don't want to move beyond that. Now, it is different for Jesus because Jesus was always without sin. So they were never really able to put him down. Yet, because they knew him back then, his father was a carpenter. Uh, a mother, uh, his mother, Mary, was, again, nothing special. 
They want uh, the rich family, the well-educated family, the, the family who had all this. So still, in their mind, Jesus is that little boy that used to run around here in Nazareth. So they did not want to accept him for who he really is. So Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except when he come back to his own folks. His own folks look at him like he's nothing. But he can go other places all around the world. And sometimes we see this again ourselves. We go other places and people will be accepting of us and we can go home and, and, and folks don't want to don't want to look at who we are. They want to look at who we used to be. Mm -hmm. So Jesus goes on. He goes on in verse 5. Jesus says I'm sorry. Jesus said what he said in verse 4. Verse 5 says now he, Jesus, now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Have mercy. Have mercy. This verse, this, this verse used to, some years ago when I, when I read this verse, uh, I hadn't always, uh, I hadn't always known about this verse. Uh, just this year, amen, amen, thank God, on, on July 2nd, on July 2nd, this year, 2020, I read the Bible from front to back. Uh, oh, I should say I finished on, on, on July 2nd. Um, but every year, for, for a number of years, I had, I, uh, on January 1st, I would start reading the Bible, and my goal was to read every verse from, from Genesis to Revelation. And every year, I would get started, and I would be going strong for a few months. I'd read a couple of chapters every night. But somewhere, it might be around March, April sometime, I might even make it to June. Sometimes I, I might just make it to February. But something would happen to break my cycle. And every year, without fail, I, I, I would not finish reading uh, the entire Bible. So this year, this year, I started reading on January 1st. And rather than just reading a few chapters here and there, trying to read every night for a year, I would just read as much as I could every night. I would read five or six chapters one night. I might read 10 or 11 chapters one night. And the Lord just uh, allowed me to, to stick with it. So, amen, I thank God that now, not saying I know the Bible from front to back. I'm not saying that. But the Lord allowed me to read it from front to back. And this verse that I have read some years ago, but it really stuck out to me because the verse says, the verse says, look at it again. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Amen. Amen. A little warm in here. Y'all, y'all excuse me. Y'all excuse me. I, mean, I don't know if it's if it is the warmth, or it's just me getting heated up because I, 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 I I'm feeling this what I'm what I'm reading to you right now. Listen, listen, Amen. listen. Amen. It says he could do no mighty work there. So so when I read this, the first time I read this, I said, wait just a minute. Jesus can do anything. What, 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 what you mean to tell me he couldn't do any mighty works then? Did somehow Jesus lose some power? Did, did somehow now uh, uh, Jesus can't perform miracles? Can, can folks be so wicked that they can stop Jesus from working? Hey Amen. I thank the Lord that the answer is no. No, no, no. I want to tell anybody who have perhaps has read this and perhaps you think that in certain circumstances Jesus cannot do this or Jesus cannot do that. The Lord uh, doesn't hear my prayer. The Lord doesn't hear me call. I called on the Lord. He didn't hear me. He, he, I asked him to save my, my loved one, save my mother, my father, my brother, sister, my child, and he didn't do it. He, he's not all powerful. The Bible tells me right here, he can't do everything. It tells me right here, he could do no mighty work. So maybe in my situation, he just wasn't powerful enough. I want to let you know right now that that is not what the word is saying. Amen. The Lord has lost no power. To you. Amen. Amen. He is all power. He's got the world in his hands. Amen. Amen. The, uh, Jesus. Jesus. Who is God? Amen. God is, is the one who stepped out on nothing and created everything. He, he, he is the one. Uh, Jesus is the one who walked on the water. He's the one that took 
two fish and five loaves and fed the multitude. He, he's the one, so I, I, I don't want anybody to think that this verse is saying that he had lost any power, that he could not do what he was purposed to do. The Lord can do anything but fail. Right, but fail. Right. So, so, so this verse isn't telling us that he lost any power, that, that because of their disbelief, he wasn't able to do, uh, perform the miracles that he had performed in the past. What this verse is telling us is that because of their unbelief, because of their unfaithfulness, they were not willing to come to him and receive the blessing. Amen. So what that says to you and I is that the blessings that God has for us are right there. But the Lord is not going to force his blessings on us. The Lord is not going to make us accept his blessings. Um, if, if, if you look at uh, Revelation 3 and 20, the uh, Bible said, Behold, I, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus, behold, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But look at the rest of the verse. He said, if anyone hears my voice and does what? Open the door. Yeah. Open the door. So we have to open our heart, open our mind, open ourselves to receive the blessing. What God does for us, his blessings, uh, another word for blessing is gift. He gifts us. He gifts us. Every morning he gifts us with life. He wakes us every morning. He gives us the activity of our lives. He, 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 he gifts us that gift. It's a gift. So if I hand a gift to you, you have to do something. Amen? What, what do you have to do? You have to accept it. We have to accept salvation. We have to accept uh, uh, the will of God. We have to accept uh, 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 the blessings of God. So when God says, uh, the Bible says that he was not able to, to do any, any, any great works there, the Bible is saying that they were not willing to accept. Uh, the Bible tells us that, that people would come from all over. They were following. They, they would come to them. They would bring their sick. They would bring their lame. They would, they, would, they would ask Jesus to heal. So they came to him here in his hometown. They didn't come. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. The Bible tells us they were offended at what he had to say. If, if, if we open up Mount Zion and we say, uh, we're going to feed the neighborhood. We got food, uh, free food. You don't have to pay for it. All you got to do is come and get it. We got food trucks out here. We got people cooking in the kitchen. We, we're giving away fruits and vegetables. As much as you want, just come get it. And you don't come and get it. The Bible, that, that, that doesn't mean that, that, that I didn't provide it. This doesn't say that Jesus didn't provide the blessing, didn't provide the gift, but the people were unwilling to receive it. I don't want to hear what he got to say. He, I, he, he ain't talking about nothing. So here, church, I, I, I just want to make sure you know that the Lord has not lost any power. Amen. He has not lost any power. He's able to do anything but faith. So it says he could do no mighty work there. In other words, uh, these folks didn't come to him the way they came to him in Capernaum. In Capernaum, uh, they, they would flock to him. They would, they would come all around. They wanted to hear what he had to say. I, I wrote down a verse I was trying to, it just came to my, my mind. I don't see it right now, but there it is, there it is. In, um, in Matthew 8, Matthew 8, when Jesus healed the, uh, the, the centurion's servant, that centurion, Roman centurion, this is a Gentile, came to Jesus and he said, uh, my servant is sick, he's about to die. Uh, but I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. And I know that he'll be here. Jesus said, I've not seen such great faith, not even in Israel. Now, it's a Gentile he's talked to. And this is one of the reasons that the Jews didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. Because Jesus would tell them sometimes, I've seen greater faith from Gentiles, Amen. from folks who don't know the law, don't know uh, what you know. I've seen greater faith from some of them than what I'm saying from you. All right. And they didn't want to hear that. They did not want to hear what he had to say. But Jesus is saying that whoever is willing to accept his word, amen, the gift is there. The gift is free. So it says he could not do uh, mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few 
sick folk, and he healed them. Those who are willing to come, those who are willing to receive the free gift. Amen. But the Lord would not force his gift on us. That, that's where some folks make a mistake. They think that if, if they don't do anything, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to sit here. If the Lord wants to heal me, he'll heal me. If the Lord wants to save me and bring me salvation, he'll bring it to me. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. We, we, we talked about this when we were studying uh, Thessalonians because the Thessalonians had thought that, that because they had heard the word and because they had, had changed, the Lord had changed them, they thought that now all they had to do is just sit on the porch and wait for the Lord to come back. We don't, we don't have to do anything. But the Lord wants us, the Lord wants us to work. He wants us to work. But even before we go to work for the Lord, the Lord wants us to open ourselves to receive him. So here, these folks weren't, weren't willing to receive the Lord. So verse 5 tells us that he can do many mighty works, except he healed a few sick people who were willing to come to him. Then finally, we get to verse 6. This is the last verse. It says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went out to the villages and, and he taught. So he marveled at their, their unbelief. The Bible tells us Jesus marveled. Jesus was astonished. Uh, going back to, to Matthew 8, where we talked about the centurion that came to Jesus and said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just speak the word. The Bible says Jesus marveled at his faith. This is a Gentile. This is this is not one of the, the, the children of Israel, not one of God's chosen people. This Gentile, this Roman centurion, said, I believe in you. I trust you. I have faith in you. And I know that you don't even have to come. All you got to do is speak the word. All you got to do is say it, and it'll be so. That's where we ought to be, church. We ought to be at the point where we know that Jesus has all power. God has all power. All he has to do is speak the word. All he has to do is think it. All he has to do is want it. All he has to do is wish it. Whatever God wants, he has the power to accomplish. So we are not to believe that God can't do. Sometimes God doesn't give us what we want, but he knows what's best for us. So we can't be offended. We can't be angry at God because we didn't get everything that we asked for. Some things that we ask for are not for us. And, and I, I know from personal experience, sometimes it, it may cause us to doubt. It may cause us to wonder, well, I was so sure that this is what God wanted for me and it, it didn't happen. So now, I, you know, I don't know what God wants from me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But that should not diminish our faith in him. We should open ourselves to him and say, Lord, I, I, I don't, I don't, recognize your will right now. I don't know where you want me to be. I don't know exactly what it is you want me to, to do, but I'm listening, Lord. I want you to move me. I want you to tell me. I want you to show me. Get, uh, 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 I want to be where you want me to be. I want to say what you want me to say. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to do what you want me to do. I am yours, Lord. Uh, 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 show me. Show me. But here what we see is some people don't want to hear the word. They, they, they don't want to go where God wants them to go or do what God wants them to do. They want to do what they want to do. They're angry. They're upset. They don't believe in the word, so they're not trusting God. The word here tells us, this second outline talks about a prophet dishonor. First, we talked about a people offended. Now we're talking about a prophet dishonor. They dishonored Jesus because they didn't recognize him as the son of God. They didn't, they didn't recognize him as the Messiah. But we, church, we have to recognize Jesus. We have to recognize who he is. He's given us his word. Everything in life that we could possibly go through has, has, has an answer right here. There's an answer right here. And sometimes maybe we, we read the answer, but we don't understand it. But God has blessed us with Sunday school, blessed us with Bible study, blessed us with a shepherd over uh, our church family. Blessed us with leadership that we can go to and we can ask about how to use this word of God to, to get where he wants us to be. So we are to make sure that we're not offended by the word. Now, sometimes we should be, uh, what's the word? We should be convicted, amen, 
We should be convicted by the word because again, the word sometimes, sometimes is to encourage us. It's to encourage us when we're down. But the word is also to let us know what we are supposed to be doing. So if we're doing wrong, then yeah, yeah, we should feel our toes being stepped on. But we should become offended. We should thank God and receive that word and thank him for giving us someone who will let us understand that word. And now we can say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Because if you didn't care for me, you would let me do what I wanted to do. You would let me go down that wrong road. But the Bible says, whom God loves, he chastises. Amen. So the word is to convict us. The word is to, to help us straighten up. The word is to encourage us. Whatever we read in the word is what God wants us to hear. And we should never be offended, but we should always be obedient to God's word. Amen. 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 God bless you, Mount Zion. I love you. God bless you this morning, and thank you so much for joining us for Sunday School. It is our prayer that you will join us next week as we I study wisdom, the way, sin, the truth, and the life. Jesus Coming from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. From heaven, again, we thank you for joining soul. us. We invite Anybody you to join us for our virtual worship services heart on Facebook and YouTube this morning at 9.30 p.m. We pray that and you'll be able to be with us. God bless Jesus you, and have a great week. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles.